Hello, this is Vic. Welcome to my channel and thank you for viewing my videos today. I'm in the beautiful country of Germany and I'm visiting the spectacular and very historic city of Heidelberg here in Germany. In this particular documentary we're going to visit the Halligenburg Theater, which is an amphitheater built by the Nazis in the mid-1930s. So let's go for a walk and we're going to learn quite a bit about the architecture of the amphitheater and quite a bit about history as well. Let's do it. So let's go for a tour and let's examine the architecture of this absolutely magnificent amphitheater here in Heidelberg, built by the Nazis and completed in June of 1935. Now let me give you a precaution and a disclaimer here when I say this is a magnificent structure. Do not take it that I mean the Nazis were magnificent. You know my feelings about the Nazis altogether from my previous videos. I'm just admiring the architecture here because it is absolutely spectacular. The seats that you see here can hold up to 12,000 people standing. Let's go a little closer and let's view the seating arrangements. Now, before we go to the seats, right in front here you see a stage. This is where theater performances were supposed to be held at. At the edges here of the amphitheater, you see these square structures right here. You can see seven on each side. This is where a flagpole was located at in the center and a huge swastika will be placed at including lights and also the speakers. I will explain to you why they needed speakers here at this place. And here's the seating arrangement of the theater the amphitheater. It is absolutely gorgeous. I feel as if I'm in Epidoros or Epidavros in Greece. There are three sets of staircases that will take you up to the top and it is in perfect and I mean absolutely perfect condition. two towers that you see up there were used to have lights and also to control the sound. Okay, let's go back to the stage here. There are two levels of the stage. Here is the first one here and this is the main stage for theater performances and for concerts. and for dancing as well. And this spot here was the spot that was used by Joseph Goebbels, the propaganda minister of the Third Reich, to deliver his opening speech on June 22nd of 1935. So let's go back and relive a moment in history here in Heidelberg in Germany. Let's go back to June 22nd of 1935 and let's try to imagine the limousine, the Mercedes-Benz limousine, bringing up this road, this newly constructed road, the propaganda minister of the Third Reich, Joseph Goebbels. The limousine stops at this point right here. The chauffeur, the driver opens the door, Goebbels exits. It comes up these steps here. Goes 
through this opening. And he's now facing a cheering crowd of 20,000 people or more. He crosses the dance floor here and moves down to the stage and all the way up to the front right here. And now the crowd is going mad, cheering, applauding, everybody standing. He proceeds to the very edge of the stage right here. There's a podium that has been set up for him over here with a microphone and he is ready to deliver a speech. You can imagine these stands here full of people, kids, women, men, young, old, cheering this Nazi figure without even imagining what was going to happen to their country within a 10-year time period. The destruction was coming to Germany in such a short period of time. But this is 1935, of course. And Germany was rising as a world power. And Joseph Goebbels, by far, played one of the most important roles in projecting this image of Germany inside Germany to the German citizens. I am now standing exactly at the same spot where Joseph Goebbels delivered his speech on June 22nd in 1935 at the opening of this magnificent theater here on top of the hill right across from the beautiful city of Heidelberg. This is where he made the speech and he called this theater, the famous expression that he used was that this theater represented national socialism in stone. In other words, this theater here was going to last thousands of years just like the Third Reich was going to last. Now let's go up the steps here in the middle of the amphitheater, this set of steps. And let's get a close view of the seats and of the architecture of this amphitheater here. Let's walk towards the control towers up there. And let's get a whole view from all the way up there. So going back to June 22nd of 1935, imagine all the people sitting here waiting, anxiously awaiting the arrival of Joseph Goebbels. He was such a mythical figure to the Germans that it must have been extremely exciting for them to view him delivering the speech right there, right in front of them, just a few meters away. Let's go forward for a few years to the current time and imagine being here with me walking up these steps and trying to imagine what took place during that evening in June of 1935. Let's go towards that control tower. Now the architect that designed and built this amphitheater was the German Hermann Olker, A-L-K-E-R. And in order to build it, he studied exclusively and explicitly the Greek amphitheaters built around the 4th 
or 5th century before Christ. And one of the things that he was paying attention to, in addition to the architecture, was the sound. See, if you go to Epidauros or Epidavros in Greece, there's an amphitheater which is still being used today and, it, and which is twice as big as the amphitheater here. But that amphitheater was built in the 5th century before Christ. And at that time there were no microphones or speakers. However, if somebody speaks down at the stage, you can hear what this person is saying right on at the very top of the amphitheater. When Alker finished building this amphitheater, he realized that you couldn't hear anything that the speakers were saying down at the bottom of the, of the stage. So what he did is he built a wall which is the entrance now, and he was hoping that that wall would reflect the sound back towards the audience. Well, that didn't happen. So what he did was he installed speakers and microphones all around the stadium, and this was the use of the control tower to control the sound and the speakers from around the stadium. And uh, here's one of the control towers. You can see the window through which the technicians had full view of the amphitheater. And from up here, they could control the lighting and also the sound of the speakers. Now, the speakers were installed on this same basis I showed you earlier today. You had a very huge flagpole with a swastika on it well, during the Nazi times, that is, and there was a huge speaker. There was also a very huge speaker on top of each control tower. There were two control towers. That's the other one right there that you can see. Here's a view of the amphitheater. Now, in the far distance right there, you see the entrance right behind the round stage. And that's the wall that Alker, Hermann Alker, designed and built. And it was, he was hoping that that wall would reflect the sound back into the amphitheater, but that did not work either. Therefore, it became necessary to install the speakers and the microphones all around this beautiful structure here in Heidelberg. Now, I always, always have a very strange feeling every time I visit a site that was either built or used by the Nazis. I was born in a country that was adversely affected by the Nazis, and I, this is why I have such a very strange feeling. As a historian, I love visiting these sites to show them to you, to videotape them to you, and to explain them to you. But when I stand on the spot where somebody, a Nazi leader, delivered a speech or even stood there, I have this absolutely terrible feeling. I don't know how else to put it. But in any case, let's examine the cost of this amphitheater. It cost 600,000 Reich marks, of which 90% of it was put forward by the city of Heidelberg. Now, when Goebbels was here on June 22nd of 1935, he praised the government for using the Reich labor force. Who were these people, the Reich labor force? Well, it was the labor force that was used by Hitler to put German people back to work. But this was not really true, it was pure propaganda, because all this site that you see here was built by, prof by professionals, the professional labor force. And they were all paid, and there was no slave labor, by the way, used in order to construct this uh, amphitheater at all. Now let's go back on stage. The amphitheater is behind me, and let's view this wall that Hermann Alker designed. This wall was intended to reflect the sound back onto the audience and unfortunately did not have the effects that he was expecting. Here's the wall. That's the entrance right there that uh, we went through earlier during the documentary. Here's a full view of the amphitheater from here.
So what has really happened to this wonderful and spectacular amphitheater here after the opening day on June 22nd of 1935 by Joseph Goebbels? Well, a few concerts and theatrical performances took place uh, before the war, and in 1946 the Americans held a few jazz concerts here. And also in 1947, on Easter Day, they held the religious uh, services. They, they invited the Germans to attend as well. Now, because of lack of electricity, the city of Heidelberg does not do anything with this uh, beautiful monument outside of uh, maintaining it. Now, it is a state-protected monument, and there are plans to install electricity and eventually start using it for all sorts of performances. Well, this has not happened as yet. This is Vic. Thank you for joining me all the way from beautiful Heidelberg. Bye-bye.